Greetings, uh, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to have a look at creating animatics, so that is uh, animated storyboards in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm just going to open up Photoshop right here and while that's kicking up we're also going to have a look at a few of the uh, documents I've created. There's an establishing shot, thumbnail example. I've also created a blank animatic which doesn't look like much because it's just a blank screen and some refined drawing parts. Now, while this is a fairly complicated process uh, at first look, um, overall, once you follow the basic steps and get used to it, it's, it's actually really quite simple to create some very, very effective previews. So let's jump straight in. So here's our Photoshop document. Uh, I'm just going to go File, New, and I'm going to jump straight to Film and Video. Now I do have as I mentioned earlier, the blank template, but uh, let's set it up from, from start. So I've gone film and video. There are some other presets here, all sorts of different video formats. You can, of course, build your own formats right over here on the right, but I'm going to go very first one, HDTV 1080p. It's a 16 by 9 ratio, and this should work just fine for now. And I'm going to hit Create. Now I'm going to zoom out. Remember using Control or Command negative to zoom out. Control Command plus to zoom in. And let's quick have a quick look at our document. So here is our blank document. Uh, I'm going to clean up this workspace. It's always a good idea to get as much real estate as possible. So I'm going to jump straight to window. And I'm going to turn off everything in this main section here, except for layers at this point. Um, application frame, options, tools, and of course this is our document untitled one. Um, it can stay on, so turn off color, turn off learn, turn off libraries and turn off properties and of course you can access any of these whenever you want. Now in our document when it first opens um, you'll notice there are some guidelines here, these little blue lines and this is showing us our screen safe and title safe lines. I'm actually going to get rid of these. Uh, one way is to use your move tool, shortcut is V, and grab them and drag them all the way up to this ruler bar here. So this is our ruler here. If you don't have your ruler here, you can go to view and go to rulers or command R. Um, so if you don't have it there, just go command R or rulers and you can toggle those rulers on and off. Uh, I'm going to clear these guides. As I said, one way is to drag them up and or across to the relevant ruler um, or we can go to view and go to clear guides and in fact that's what I'm going to do, clear guys. Now, even though I've got rid of those, I do need to create some more guides. So this is really important that you do this. So we're going to make this sort of a, a starting rule. Make sure you have these guides in place. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that. And you'll notice it locks down to the bottom or the top, the left and the right as I drag it close. Now, the reason why it's sort of snapping in place is because of this. I'm going to go to view and I'll notice that snap is turned on. Now that is pretty handy if we're doing some graphic design stuff and I'm going to show you a reason why it kind of works but I'm also going to show you a reason why it can be a bit annoying. So I'm just creating this guide in the middle. You don't need to create that one and I'm going to switch to my brush tool shortcut B and I'm just going to use this to draw a little line and another one and what you'll notice if we zoom in is they've got a little divot where we run into this line and the simple reason for that is that this guideline is trying to get us to snap to that so if we're drawing it can be a little bit of annoying so I'm going to undo that remember command or control alt and Z to step back each time and clear that out so there's my canvas uh, with its guidelines and as I said these guidelines are super important that you get them on the perimeter and we'll get into the exact reasons for that. All right, well, let's jump in um, and let's start building our document. Now, I have an establishing shot here and there are thumbnails here. I'm going to open these with Photoshop. So we can right click on this, go open with Photoshop. If you have already have it open, it should be there. Otherwise, you can go to other. Other option is to drag it into the Photoshop document um, icon. Um, if you're on Windows, you'll, you'll have to um, basically um, attach it. 
Now, what I don't want you to do is just drag in here. Uh, that can work, um, but for this this little exercise, I'm going to get you guys to open this individually. So they need to be in their own document here. And I'm also going to right click and actually let's just do this one for now. So up the top here, let's maximize the screen again. I have my document ready to go. This is going to be our working frame. And this is going to be our first frame that we're going to place in here or our shot. Now, at the moment, uh, it's not really an animatic. An animatic has time, it has video layers. So let's set this up. So I'm going to go window. I'm going to go down to timeline and activate the timeline. And there it is here. It just popped up. You'll need to click on create video timeline. And that creates our timeline. Now there's nothing in here. If we go over here, this is just says layer zero. Um, so you know that's not really doing much for us. You can zip through that little timeline here. Let's have a quick look at this workspace here. Um, here's our layer zero. Here's our layer zero. So whenever we create a layer, it's going to be placed in the timeline. Please note that the default time is five seconds. Every time you create a new layer, it will be five seconds. This lower part here, we have a zoom option. Now this allows us to zoom in to our actual timeline. So as you can see, I've zoomed in here. I haven't made the timeline any bigger, but we can see that here we can zip it all the way across and we're at five seconds. And in fact, if you look down at this bottom left corner here, we can see it says four seconds and 29. So 29 is the, the frames. And if I go to this little icon here, this is our menu for our timeline. And I can jump in here and I can go to set frame rate you can see it currently says 29.97 as the frame rate and also down here it says 29.97 so we're almost at exactly five seconds at that very point after that we will be five seconds so um, so that's all very well and good there's a little zoom option that we can zoom in there uh, we also have an option of scrolling across as our timeline gets more complex here um, and We'll start addressing some other areas here. Now, I can jump to a particular point by clicking on this option here and double clicking. And I can say, all right, I want to be at three seconds and zero frames. So zero, zero. Click on there and it will move this little marker here to exactly three seconds. So nice little handy option there. We have a play option, which will slide through. But as I said, there's nothing really to see right now. All right, let's start getting, I'm gonna move the playhead to zero point again. Let's start getting these shots in. Now I'm gonna zoom out. And I'm gonna use the rectangular selection tool. It's over here, shortcut is M. And I'm gonna click and drag over my entire frame here. I'm then gonna go Command C for copy. Go to my untitled document and go Command V for paste. Now it's extraordinarily large, so if I zoom out, it actually takes up quite a large area. So I'm going to need to transform this down and fit it in. So I'm going to go Command T to transform. Your other options, of course, are Edit and Transform over here. And I'm going to grab one of the corners and start dragging it. As I drag it in, I don't want to stretch this too much. I'm going to hold down Shift. You can do Shift at any point once you start transforming. I'm going to get this and I'm going to fit it into frame. Now, the image I've created doesn't actually fit into the 14 by 19 aspect ratio. But that's okay. The, one of the other golden rules, besides having these guidelines, is we need to make sure that any layer that we create or image that we bring in needs to be at least the size of these guides or bigger. What we don't want to do is have it smaller. We need it to be exactly the same or bigger so it's okay if we go outside the lines for that um, but anything small is going to cause us some issues a bit later on so try and remember that as a particular rule and I'm going to hit enter to apply the transformation so here it is layer one and it's created a five second time timeline great so I'm going to rename this because this is actually going to be my first shot I'm going to call it shot one and there it is there um, and it through not much really happening with that so let's start adding some more shots to this so I'm going to go back to this one I'm going to close it down 
I'm going to go back to find my thumbnail shot, it's this one here. I am going to open this in Photoshop. I am going to open this one in a separate, in, in its own document. So I have, still have, you know, here's my um, animatic. And from now on, I'm going to refer to this as my animatic. And here is my thumbnail up here. Now, this is a flattened document. And sort of what I want you to think of this is, as if you had scanned in your storyboards or you've created them on a singular document. So I want to transfer some of these images across to my timeline. So, you know, I can use the rectangular selection tool and grab an image and then copy and then click back in here and paste and then transform and then move and scale. Um, but let's have another quick look at some of the things we can do in Photoshop. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to go to my window panel. I'm going to go to arrange and we have some options of viewing multiple windows open at the same time. So I only have two open at the moment. So I'm going to go to window, arrange, and I'm just going to hit two up vertically. And this is going to show me both layers that are open. Here's my thumbnail and here's my animatic. And from here, I can grab my frame using the marquee tool. Go copy, click in here, go paste. Click back in here and click and drag. Command C, Command V. And I'm going to repeat this just with a few more. Copy, paste. Now, obviously, I need to do these individually, so it does take a few moments. And I'm just going to stop it maybe just after one more. Copy and paste. Now there is all the same size and they're from the same size document. So I'm actually going to turn this off now because I think I've had enough. And let's have a look at our timeline. Here's our timeline here. And I have all my images stacked up nicely in the middle. Now I can go ahead and go Command T and start scaling these up. But what I'm going to do is, as they're all the same size, I'm going to Shift Select over here on the layer panel. You'll notice they'll start Shift Selecting here. Command T. So I've selected all of them at the same time. I'm going to drag out Command T, Transform. And once again, I'm just going to make sure that they fit within or larger than this, these guidelines are. Hit Enter to apply the transformation. And here they are here. Now, you should have an idea of which sequence they are from your storyboards anyway. So I'm going to start renaming these. Shot 2, Shot 3, Shot 4, Shot 5, and of course, the double click. Now, it is always important to, to sort of rename your stuff. Um, just helps later on. And if we scrub through our timeline, again, nothing's really happened. You'll notice that they're all stacked up here. Wherever our um, playhead guide is, that is where they will be placed. So I've made sure mine's at zero. And here they are all here. Now I'm going to zoom out. And I'm actually going to zoom out on my timeline here so I can get a bit more of an idea. Now layer zero. Uh, this was just the blank layer. If I turn all these off, um, I actually don't need that. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to start off with shot one, then go to shot two, then go to shot three, four, five, and so on. But we need to start stacking these so that they are in line. So I'm actually going to grab shot two here in my timeline and drag it and place it after shot one. Shot three, shot four, shot five. And finally, short six. So now they are all actually in a video group. And you can see from here. Now, I can take these out of the video group. But for this exercise, this is going to work just fine. And I can actually press play or hit my space bar. And you can see it sort of zips through. Now, at the moment, it's not really a very exciting animatic at all. They're all running for exactly five seconds. So this is where figuring out how long your shots are going to run for is really, really important. And it's important we do this at this juncture. So we get all our shots in, and then we start saying, OK, well, how long do I want this shot to be for? Now, this shot one, which we can see here, make sure your, your uh, 
your playhead is over it so you can see it and I want this to be about six seconds so I'm going to move my cursor to the end of this and I'm going to start dragging as soon as you start dragging it'll come up with a little pop-up and you can see it says end five seconds and duration is five seconds so I'm going to drag this out and I want this one to be about six seconds or so so I'm going to make it six seconds and ten frames then I'm going to go to shot two and this one's got some clouds that are coming over and I think for this one I probably only need about three seconds for this so I'm going to drag that down I'm going to look at the duration and I'll drag that to about three seconds go to the next shot sort of the clouds reflecting I'm going to give that about two seconds this is just a eye flash so let's get this down to you know, maybe half a, half a second eye opens and we do the camera is going to be tracking out let's give that about whatever that is three seconds and maybe a nice little fade in between there and we continue the fade out so maybe this one once again maybe two seconds so now we've got a bit of a sequence a nice little opening situation clouds etc and of course you will have your own storyboards to do this but we want to get this kind of locked away fairly early um, in fact I'm going to make this opening shot a little bit less so I'm going to start dragging this in I take it to about five and a half seconds and you'll notice they all start shifting in so there we have it we've got what is the bare bones of our animatic still not very exciting and what we want to do is we want to get some camera movements in here we want to get some actual um, action happening in here as well so let's go to our next important thing that we need to remember and this is converting all of our shots here into smart objects now at the moment they are not smart objects they are rasterized layers uh, nothing special about them problem with the way that they are at the moment is if we do anything to them it's permanent it's um, you know destructive so what we need to do is we need to right click on these layers and please do it in the actual layer itself not in the thumbnail view this is our little thumbnail view so right click and go to convert to smart object go to the next one right click convert to smart object now you'll need to do this individually if you shift select a bunch of layers and right click and go convert to smart object it will actually compress them all down into a singular smart object that's going to affect everything so I'm going to undo that and I'm just going to run through really quickly right click convert to smart object for all of these shots now they all smart objects and the cool thing about now is they are going to remember everything from now on so they're going to look at their time frame and they're going to go okay I remember that and they're going to do that so let's actually jump in and see how really cool smart objects are and I'm going to do this with shot one this is our very first shot this is our establishing shot here it is here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click into this thumbnail window as soon as I double click into that you'll notice it's actually opened up in its own panel its own window so here's our animatic and this has got all our shots through here and this is our shot one and it's opened up all by itself it still has the timeline here if I scrub through that you can see it is at the 5 second and 12 frame mark which is what I made it in the composition in the animatic so that's pretty cool now this image that I've created um, if we have a look we still have the guidelines now the guidelines the reason why I made them so important is the guidelines are going to show us where our actual screen is so this document is showing our smart object which actually hangs outside of our canvas if I click on it here you can see there it is there it's you know this bit at the top bit at the bottom but if I open it you can see it's actually larger than that so we just need to make sure that when we build anything it stays within these guidelines this is what we're gonna see is within this it's this gonna be our camera view now this shot that I've created I've just added some color to this, this is obviously something you don't need to do unless you really are trying to prove a point but this is thinking about how we might animate this and in the shot I'm gonna have a little sailboat it's gonna cruise into the harbor um, and we're also going to be um, dollying in so we're going to be moving our camera along with it uh, or at a similar pace 
we're going to have a tower in the foreground so, and it's going to move maybe towards and past us the island could be a single layer background clouds so we need to think about what elements we might need to break up for each of these elements according to how you're going to animate it you may need to create a new layer and animate that so to save a bit of time as an example I have created this document now this is uh, refined drawing parts and I'm going to open this with Photoshop there it is there so here it is here and it has a bunch of individual layers we've got a background color we've got a boat layer I'm just going to rename that quickly we've got a tower layer foreground tower and we've got an island and we've got some clouds so I'm actually going to grab all of those. I'm going to shift select all those. I'm going to go command C to copy and command V to paste. Now they are still all selected and I'm going to transform them, command T and I'm just going to make sure that they fit roughly within frame. Now this point doesn't really matter as much but as long as if our original shot is fits within the frame to start with we should be good. Now the other thing you'll notice is that they are all shorter than our sequence so they are all at five seconds. As I said every time you create a new layer it's gonna automatically be five seconds so we need to make sure that we stretch these out. If we don't it's gonna cut off after five seconds and our timeline will continue so we need to grab the end of these and just stretch them out and they should snap to the end anyway just to make life a little bit easier just go individually like so. Now what I want you to try and remember is this drawing here um, this, is a, take, this has taken a lot longer than you normally would in a storyboard or an animatic um, but I've created each of these pieces individually and that's just kind of what you'd, you'd need to do. So let's have a look at animating this now. Now I'm gonna bring my playhead back to zero and I'm going to convert all of these to smart objects so just like we did before right click convert to smart object and continue down with each one okay, so I've got all my objects converted to smart objects and if I go to the left here on my timeline and I have a hit the drop down arrow you can see if they've got some animation options transform opacity and style and you can see by these icons here these are all smart objects now I'm actually going to get my boat layer with our little boat here and I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to rasterize this guy again so I'm stopping it from being a smart object and I'm going to you'll notice it's changed from transform to position over here and I'm going to hit the stopwatch on this my timeline playhead is at zero so it creates a keyframe as soon as I hit the stopwatch wherever that position is so now I can move that timeline across and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my boat across just slightly and as soon as I do that as soon as I make a transformation or a change in position there it's going to drop a keyframe in so stopwatch is hit and wherever I move that and you can see now I can scrub that across and it animates simple now here's the downside of it I, I'm going to move it back to this end here. I'm going to transform this because you know it's going in the distance, it's going to get smaller. So Command T and I've scaled it down. Let's just zoom in a bit. And as I scrub across, it's a bit of a problem. It doesn't scale as far as a transformation goes. In fact, if I rotate it as well, it's going to be rotated all the way. So this is one of the downsides of using a standard layer. So I'm going to undo those. Command Alt Z. Let's take it all the way back. I'm going to re-rasterize this. So uh, sorry, convert back into smart object. So right click, convert to smart object. There's my boat drop down. It now has transform instead of position. So transform now means I can move my boat to where I want it to start. Hit the transform. There's my keyframe. Move it to where I want it to go. Move it. Command T, holding down shift to scale so it doesn't do anything too crazy. And 
apply and there is my new keyframe and now I've got my boat going large to small and heading off into the distance. I can actually move this to any point here and I can remove my boat and it will create a keyframe for that so now it's going to go across and sort of straighten up. So that is really the basics of it. Um, we can do some other stuff like add an opacity to it so this is going to be affected by the opacity of our layer and I can maybe set my opacity to start with to zero, uh, move it in a few frames and ramp that up to 100 like so and it's going to go from invisible to visible and it's also going to be moving. Um, if you want to put in a, a placer keyframe as well, so I'm going to move here and let's say I want to go from where it is now and gradually become invisible what I can do is I can hit this little icon here on the left and this will place a keyframe in at whatever the condition it is right now so whatever opacity is at the, at the very point it will just go great let's let's put one in there stops you having to adjust the opacity and then of course when we move it across I can drop that down again so now we've got a boat that's not only moving but it's sort of become a ghost boat, appears for a while and then gradually fades off again. So interesting to do, I'm actually going to turn that off, I'm going to unclick the stopwatch, that gets rid of any animation and I'm just going to bring that opacity back up to 100. Great! So I'm going to do the same with the rest of them, remember they're all smart objects now. Uh, I'm going to go to the tower, let's do the drop down for that, I'm going to hit transform, I've got my playhead to the beginning where I want it to start. In fact, I'm just going to go and drop down all the others and background I probably don't need to do anything. And I'm going to try to get some camera movements in here. So I'm going to set up my island where I want to start. And this might involve a bit of tweaking as we go. Tower. Let's scale him down little bit because he's going to get closer as we move in. And the clouds, the clouds I'm actually going to scale quite large. So I'm going to get those, again zooming off, and scale them a bit larger and wider than they need to be because I'm actually going to move these across so we can move outside of our canvas. Great, so this is all at the beginning they all have their transformation turned on so now it's just a matter of taking my slider to the end of my shot and then selecting all my specific layers and moving and scaling them accordingly to where I want it. Now as I've said before bear in mind you do want to keep an eye on where these guidelines are so this is what we're going to see in our frame so there's my island it's getting a little bit closer shifting across a bit and I'm just going to do a quick scrub through move it across a bit and I'm just going to do some very get an idea of sort of parallax uh, as we're going I just adjust the boat a little bit further Right, just to add some extra effect, I'm going to jump into the clouds layer. There it is here, and I'm going to animate that across. So move to the timeline here, Command T, and I'm going to shuffle those across like so. Scrub across. We've got some nice cloud movement, and there we have it. We've got a basic dolly shot moving in there. Uh, I've got the idea of parallax very very simple to do. Now this is where it gets really cool um, we have multiple layers in here I'm going to hit command S to save or you can go file save there it is, it saved it out but you'll notice it hasn't asked me where I want to save it. The reason for that is it is actually embedded in our animatic. Now here is our animatic you know, here's our shots that I've placed in here, they're all still shots, but this shot one, which was our nice colourful one, now has all the information that we've done 
in our individual shot. So remember I double clicked on there, this then opens in its own window and we create our own video. And it's as simple as that. Okay, and here we have our uh, animatics so far, little animation in shot one, switch over to shot two, etc, etc. Now if I take this back to the beginning and I hit the play button here, it'll start ticking through and we can actually see here's our frames and our seconds. But if we notice over here on the bottom left, we've got some red numbers coming up. And this is basically saying that we're not running at the correct frame rate. It'll speed up, it'll slow down, uh, depending on the complexity of the shots. Um, and basically, you know, the more and more uh, heavy the shots are, um, the more RAM being used on the computer, and eventually we get more and more slow down for that. So while, you know, we can scrub through this and we get a decent speed, you need to remember that if you are doing this, uh, what we call a RAM preview, um, it may not necessarily be running at its correct frame rate. So it might be running slower than would actually be once you've sent it out as a video. So what can we do? Well, one thing we can try to do is I'm going to go over to this menu here and I'm going to go down to set timeline frame rate. And click on that. And here's our frame rate, 29.97. This is sort of where we started, uh, HGTV 1080p, and I'm going to lower this. Now we can customize this down here, but I'm just going to go straight up and I'm going to go to 10 frames per second. Now it's still going to be roughly about the same same length per shot, um, unless you're doing something immaculately detailed where it needs to be down frame by frame, um, perhaps if you're doing an actual uh, animated feature, um, that could be an issue, but if this is just purely a previs, um, where you're going close to two seconds, close to two and a half seconds, that sort of thing. 10 frames per second is not going to do that much difference. Um, it is going to, however, lower the the, uh, the size of our document. Um, so there it is there, 10 frames per second. Our, our timeline here has just sort of shrunk down. Um, you know, if we move it back to here, we can still see it is about five seconds and four frames, which is about five and a half uh, seconds. And I'm just going to hit the space bar to start playing. And we're still getting some slowdown, but this is quite a complex and heavy shot. And then as we get through, we'll notice it's starting to turn green. So if it is still slowing down, just be aware of that, that it is probably going slower than you would actually think. But let's look at rendering this out. Now, there's a couple of ways to render this out. One way is to go File, Export, and then right down the bottom, Render to video. And you might need to give it a few seconds if this is the first time it has actually rendered a video. Um, and you'll get this render video option. Now I'm going to cancel that. So there is another option here. Bottom right hand corner of our timeline there's a little arrow. Um, and if we hover over that it says render video. And this is going to get us up to the same thing. So what you want to do is you want to rename it. So let's call it test render for example. And I'm going to call it one. Find a location. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to place mine on the desktop. I do not want to create a new subfolder, although you can do if you want. So, for example, renders. And let's have a look. We've got an option of Adobe Media Coder or Photo Image Sequence. I'm going to stick with Media Encoder. There's not too many formats on this, so you should be okay. Uh, format, DPX, uh, H.264 or QuickTime. Now, if you're on PC, you will not get the QuickTime option, um, but H.264 should be fine for what we're doing here. Now, preset, high quality. This is perfect if you want to have full high quality render. It's going to be the, the correct size, it's going to be correct everything. However, it is going to give you a very large file. Uh, it's going to take longer to render out, and uh, you know, it can be quite heavy. So what I'm going to suggest is if you want, just want to have a look, have a quick uh, sort of visualization, go all the way to the bottom, YouTube SD, 360p widescreen. Um, it is 29.97, um, but it is a fairly low uh, format. So I'm going to click on that. As its preset size is a lot smaller. Uh, frame rate, preset frame rate. Well, we know it's 10 frames per second, so I'm going to switch back to there. So it's just going to be lower anyway. Otherwise, it's going to try and ramp it up to 29.97. Rest of these we could probably just leave. 
um, we're doing the entire work area so that's fine if you want to render out elements you can as well and then I'm going to hit render and this might take a few moments just to export depending on the processing power of your computer and of course the size of your video but eventually it will tick through and it will end up where your location is and then you can obviously play it through QuickTime or VLC or uh, any other um, movie player that will play an H.264 and hopefully it won't have too much lag on it either. So let's just see when that one is should be appearing at any point. Cool, alright, let's minimize that. And over here I have a folder because I asked it to create a folder, it says renders, it should say renders. There it is there, 1.4 meg, uh, not tiny but not huge either, and I can place that through, and we get a reasonable sort of run. Still not very exciting, not, you know, no movement in these shots or anything like that, so okay, it's good for a test. So let's have a look at a few other things that we can do with this as well. Let's bring this back. So. What about some transitions? So I'm going to zoom in to our timeline here. We've got, basically we've just got straight cuts between each of the shots. Now Photoshop does have some transitions. So oh, this icon here has fade, cross fade, fade with black, fade with white, fade with color, and also a duration. And it's just going to be a matter of simply clicking and dragging. And you can do something as simple as a cross fade between shots and you can click back on there and right click and you can change the duration if you wish and maybe you want to do a, a fade with black instead so it's fading from black into shot 2 and you know, maybe let's do a fade with white and drag that onto the previous shot there so I'm going to fade to white it's going to do a strange cut and then black. So we can do some nice transitions there and of course you know, delete those if we want. So I'm going to do a nice crossfade with those between these two shots and there it is there. Now let's have a quick look at animating our little sequences, our shots, without having to delve into the smart objects. So for example this shot number five, we have a look at our markers here I have a dolly out shot so what we do is we'd start in close to the eye and then the camera would gradually move backwards and expose more of the eye and that kind of ties in with the previous shots which is the close-up of the eye so we're starting in nice and close and then we are gradually exposing the entire shot now as these are all in their own video group here um, it's not quite going to work the same as our little drop down here for our transformation. So if you look a little bit closer into the layer, this is shot 5, you're going to need to make sure that our playhead is right at the beginning there and it needs to be on the layer. There's a little arrow here and I'm going to hit the drop down for that and this is going to bring up the options of transformation opacity and style specifically for that shot. And then I can hit the transform stopwatch to start my transformation. I'm going to hit command T to transform it. Now of course it is a smart object as we can see from the icon there so we are able to rotate and scale and position and do all that kind of fun stuff that we wouldn't normally be able to do with just a regular object. And then what I can do is move this to the end of the playhead. Now remember it needs still to have this be in that layer. If it goes out of that layer it won't allow me to transform so I need to be in that layer, I need to have it selected and now I'm going to transform and I'm going to scale it down and rotate and see if I can fit the shot in a little bit closer to how I'd like it to end up. something like that. And now as I move through we can see we have our animation within there. 
Now, one of the other things we can also look at is, besides delving into individual layers, where we can open them up, uh, like we did with shot one, as their own layer and animate things, and like I've done with shot five, where we've used the drop down and animated that shot as far as it creating a camera move, we might want to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to go over to shot number two here, which is this clouds one. Um, and I'm going to open this as a smart object. So I'm going to double click on shot two. There it is there. It has its timeline. You can see the frame that's going to tell us where that image is. Now, I may want to expand this out. Um, I might say, you know, I want more clouds coming in than this image currently has available, or maybe we're doing a long, uh, you know, a panning shot or a crane shot or something like that and I want to have some more information that maybe I, I haven't quite fit in here. So let's say for example I'm going to do a crane shot so maybe there's uh, for example I could have a top of a mountain here peeking out and then some clouds and then maybe the base of a mountain or something like that. Now to do this what I could do is go to my crop tool over here and go see, see for crop and go, well, you know what, I'm going to have some mountains up there, so I'm going to stretch out my canvas like so, and maybe just have a little bit underneath, and hit enter, and I've increased my real estate, so to speak. So if I was to create a new layer, as an example, and again, to start with our, our, our base layer, it doesn't really need, you know, it's just a, just a guideline, um, but let's just say I'm going to draw in some, some mountains. I'm going to do this quite rapidly, just using the lasso tool as an example, and again, whatever technique best suits the task at hand is always, is always a good one. Um, let's see. Alright. So, let's just say, call those mountains. need to do this quite rapidly because I am going to be destroying it. Let's move that layer ahead and I'm just going to do some clouds. Some very strange clouds. There we go. And of course I'm just going to drop in a background. So, you know, we've got we've got some stuff here, we can animate that. Now I'm gonna hit Command S to save this. And you know, here's my frame that I should be working with. So this is what we should see this being saved out to our animatic app. Let's have a look. Well, it's saved some of it, but if we actually look where the frame says it is, which is here, we'll notice we don't see any of the red sky background here. Yet when we go to the animatic we are seeing that. Now the reason for that is when we do expand our canvas out, this being a smart object, it automatically assumes that everything is centralized. So what we're actually looking at here in this shot is this is the dead center comparatively of this. So rather than seeing this base area, you know, we need to extend out here up the top more than we did down the bottom but it's centralized it. So the hack for this is to basically when you are cropping is to make sure that it is equal height and width. Now to do that you can actually it should actually lock into place little snap mechanism as you expand out. So whatever the width is it needs to be equal from the center both sides and top to bottom and then you apply hit command s and this is actually closer to where we wanted it now of course from there we can jump back into our smart object I'm gonna hit the transform position on all of these actually what I do need to do to that rookie mistake 
is I need to change the duration of my timelines to match up with my opening one which is shot 2 I need to convert these to smart objects go to my drop downs I'm going to apply the transformation to each of them layer 2, I don't really need to, it's just going to be a background, but let's scale that up anyway, like so. And I actually want my mountains to start, again using my frame reference here, and maybe the clouds start somewhere like move it to the end point and the, mount, the clouds go up a little bit and of course going to have the mountains come up even more hit command S you can sort of see there's a little transformation let's jump back to the shot here and there we have it there A little bit of a glitch there, but usually when, once you play it through once, it should fix itself. And there we have it. So transitions, some movements in between, and we create little animations within those. Let's have a quick look at our animatic here. We've got a number of shots. Uh, we've got shot one, which is an establishing shot. We've got some animation happening here, um, some basic transitions, a bit of camera movement here in uh, shot number five. And you can see that by the drop down here, we've got some transformation options in there. And they're all on the same timeline. Um, still a bit of work to do, but we're getting there. Now, in shot one, which is our establishing shot, if I double click on the thumbnail, you can see we have our different elements, boat, tower, island, clouds, etc. Now, as I have sort of built this according to my initial drawing with the different elements, um, it's going to be fairly easy to animate. But what happens if you don't have the luxury of sort of figuring this out as you go? Um, you may need to break apart an image, maybe someone else has done the storyboard, or you just haven't really considered how this might be animated. So let's jump back to our shot here. and. I'm going to give you an example using a fairly simple image. Um, this one here I've called shot six. And it's just a guy and a tree, a bit of a background, some clouds, and maybe a leaf. And I'm going to see if I can break this apart to animate it. Now I'm going to drag this one directly into our document that's already open. This is our animatic document. Now I can't see it at the moment. It has placed it into the environment, but we can't see it because our timeline will only show us whichever frame is, is pertinent at that point where it's activated. We can however see this bounding box here and this is trying to place the object in as a smart object and at this point we can scale it and do everything but I'm just going to apply that. You can either enter or tick and there it is shot six and let's just zoom in a little bit and there's shot six there so I'm going to just start off I'm just going to drag it right to the position it's supposed to be shot six and let's scrub over there. And here it is here. Now there's some problems. We've got some gaps happening here. And our logical thing would be to transform it. So let's transform it. Let's scale it. So I make sure it's outside of our viewport. Apply. And okay, well it's definitely outside. And let's double click on this icon for shot six. And it does open its own window, but we don't have that that bounding box, those those guidelines. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. We don't know where our screen is actually going to be and that's pretty damn important. So I'm going to close that down. Um, what I am going to do though is I'm going to have to get rid of its memory. So the reason why it does that, where it opens up and it goes, hey look, you know, that's where we are, 
is because it's remembering when we first brought it in. So at a certain point, we may need to get this to lose its memory. Um, and to do that, what we need to do is we need to convert this from a smart object. And again, this is our little identifier here in the, the, uh, the corner of our image icon. And I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to rasterize that layer. So rasterize is going to basically get to lose its memory um, and remember at that particular state. And you can see now it no longer has that icon. So now it's just a normal layer, not great for animating. We can't delve deeper into that sort of layer. Um, so it is now rasterized. The other thing I want to make sure I do is set the time duration. So by default it's going to be at 5 seconds and if I scrub over there it's at 4 seconds and 9 frames. We are at 10 frames per second so it's essentially 5 seconds. So I need to adjust that according to how many seconds I want it to be. So I'm going to make this one be about, uh, let's just do about 3 seconds here. There are, thereabouts. Great. Now I've got the duration. I've made it so it still fits and if I go control T you can actually see that you know it does fit outside of the bounding box. Now I'm going to reconvert it. So now I'm going to go right click convert to smart object yet again and now it's going to remember everything from now onwards. So now if I double click in there and it has sort of shuffled across this is a problem you get sometimes with um, having your animation running for 10 frames per second is it sort of cuts down. I'm just going to move that across and there it is there and it should be to the correct frame rate, uh, frame size and we've got our little viewport, our little guidelines so we can see where our, where our stuff is going to be. So really important to do. If you are going to run into that situation where it already is a smart object um, and that usually happens if you are dragging an image off a desktop directly into an open document. Uh, it doesn't happen if you open that with its own document. So important to make sure you get to lose its memory, otherwise it's going to keep sort of recursing back to the original. Great, so let's look at breaking this apart. It's a still image, there's not much happening. Um, let's see if we can cut it to pieces and then put it back together again. So here it is here, and we're going to look at a few tools here. So um, our basic selection tools are going to be besides our rectangular and elliptical is our lasso tool. Shortcut is L. There are three types here. Once again, if you hit shift and the shortcut, it will cycle through these. We're going to have a quick look at those. We're also going to have a look at the quick selection tool. Magic wand tool is also quite handy, but for most of the time, we're just going to use the quick selection tool and the shortcut here is W. Great. Well, let's jump into the lasso tool. There are three types of lasso tools. Uh, the first one is just the standard lasso tool. And this one here, allows us to just click and drag and it will create a basic shape. Once that shape is closed, you'll get this marching ants effect. From there you can do something like grab your move tool, cut it apart, maybe grab a brush tool, paint it in there, or erase, and it will keep it bound within that box. And that's basically how a selection tool works. Remember Command or Control D to deselect, or you can also go up here, select deselect. Um, and one of the tricky things you need to remember with this is sometimes when you're using these tools you may not actually realize you have something selected. So I've just done a really small one here and I might try and paint over here and it's not working. And the reason for that is if we zoom right in I actually have just a few pixels selected accidentally. And you know, it's only going to paint within that selection. So I'm going to zoom back out again and I'm going to deselect that command D just to make sure I'm out. So it's a really important one to remember is the deselect. So standard lasso tool, great. Um, the other one I want to show you, I'm going to jump to the magnetic lasso tool. There are some options up here that you need to play with sometimes. Frequency is how often it puts down a point um, on the path, which it says if you hover over. Um, contrast it starts looking at the edge of, of our image. Now typically what you do is you click to start and you drag and I'm going to zoom in for this and it will start laying down points. Um, if you've got an object that is very simple 
with a good contrasting edge it will typically work reasonably well um, however I quite often find it gets a bit confused sometimes um, as it has here and it will start laying down points that you don't want. Now you can guide it to a certain degree. You can also step backwards by hitting delete and you can start stepping back point by point. Um, and you can sort of force it into where it wants to go a little bit by simply clicking with your mouse when you want it to lay down a point. So in some cases it's fantastic, it's reasonably quick, all the rest of it. On other cases you actually spend more time sort of fixing it up so I'm just going to step out of that um, either hit delete until you go all the way back or double click to select it um, double click will close the loop and then of course command D to deselect Now the one I typically use most of the time for this kind of work is the polygonal lasso tool it only does straight edge wherever you click it's just going to do a straight edge not detailed but usually for what we're going to do it should be pretty good so uh, I'm going to do a really quick cut around our little character here. Um, I'm kind of going outside of the edges, but given that this is a previs thing, um, as long as if it looks reasonably good, we should be okay. We're not going to get too too finicky, um, and of course, time constraints are always a factor when we're doing this stuff. Um, if, we, if we had all the time in the world, we could make it look amazing, but seldom the case and of course we do need to close the loop I'm gonna make a couple little errors here okay cool now I've made some errors I've gone in a little bit and I've gone out a bit and I don't want these bits but fortunately we do have an option of getting rid of these so I've still got the lasso tool selected there's our marching ants to show that it is closed shape and if I hold down the alt key you'll see a little negative sign will appear and then I simply click and create a shape around the area that I want to subtract close that and it will take that away if I want to add like this shape here I can hold down shift and a little plus key will appear and then you start clicking and you create that shape so remember alt to subtract and shift to add backspace will fix all that. So there's a quick selection of our little character here. It's not the neatest thing ever but it might do. Now what we can do is we want to create this on its own layer. So one of the things we can do is we can copy and paste. We can go command C or edit and copy. There it is there and paste command V. So I've already done Command C, I'm going to go Command V, and there is our layer right there. It's exactly the same, um, but you need to be a little bit cautious with copy and paste, Command C, Command V. It can sometimes place our image a little bit outside of the place. So I've just done another paste there, and you can see it sort of jumped up a little bit. And again, it keeps moving it. So what we want to do, I'm going to take those back, here's my selection, is what you want to do is you want to press Command J. So Command J does copy and paste in place. It's a very, very important one to try and remember, Command J. Um, our other options of doing this would be edit, copy, edit, special paste, paste in, uh, paste in place, Shift Command V. So it's if you remember command J it does it all in one so command J there it is there and there's a little character it's all by him like this lonesome so I'm just gonna rename the person character to you as our background and what I want to do is I want to clear out the image behind so there's our person there but he's got a problem if I move him over here we can see this background still has the character there so we need to get rid of that character and how am I going to do this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on this character I want to get those marching ants back but I don't want to spend the time with the lasso tool fortunately what we can do is if you hold down the command or control key 
in the thumbnail layer of the layer you want to select and hold hold down and then click into that window it will automatically select whatever is in that layer um, in this case there's nothing in the background so it's just selecting exactly where that layer is if I was to do it with the background layer it will select that entire layer and you can see there are the margin ends so what I want to do let's select reselect back on the character layer great turn the visibility off so he's now invisible we can still see him but that's because he's in the background layer and there he is there now what I want to do is I want to get rid of this guy now if I hit delete it's just going to leave a big hole um, step back from that if I maybe go B for brush and hold down alt to pick up a color white I could maybe paint him in great and deselect but I'm missing some things here um, and again that might have to be what you do is you go in there and then you repaint in the lines um, but I'm going to show you another technique and this is going to be using this button so edit fill and I click on this now uh, you need to be a little bit cautious with this sometimes and I'll show you why on the next one if this one works um, set it to content aware easy enough it's the default color adaptation and just hit OK and it hasn't really worked that well and what it does is it gets the information from around where you've selected and it says okay well you want to fill that in with relevant information now there's obviously there's a few areas where it's hit some lines and it's grabbing some you know is a cloud and there's some other information there so there is a fix for this that quite often works a little bit better and this involves increasing the area that we've just selected so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select I'm going to go to modify and then I'm going to expand it'll ask you how many pixels you want to set it to this is going to depend on your screen uh, size so how many pixels your screen is I'm going to set this one to about 10 and I'm just going to hit OK and you can see it's just sort of expands it out a little bit so you may need to play around with that but uh, once you get the hang of it it should be pretty much set for the rest of them and then once we've done that we go back to edit fill okay give it a few moments and it's done a reasonable job it's kind of had a look at the areas around it's filled this in a little bit with the the line work and for a sketch it, it's not too bad so I'm going to deselect that from command D and let's try that with there's that person on that separate layer let's try it with a tree so this one I'm going to use a different tool we've done the lasso tools I'm going to use this one here quick selection tool let's check up the top here sample layers is turned on um, it doesn't really matter because we're using this layer anyway but um, you may need to toggle that auto enhance is turned on usually helps and what we're going to do with this is we can adjust the brush size. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger so we can see it. Uh, again, use your square brackets for this to make your brush size bigger or smaller. And it's a selection tool. It's, um, it allows you to select areas, but it also looks at the boundaries. So best technique for this, I'm going to try and grab this tree, is stay away from the edges. It gets confused. Stick to the center of the object, so this tree. I'm going to start in the center. A click and then gradually drag upwards and it'll sort of jump drag and triggers to do it incrementally it's jumped and taken an excess bit here now we could command Z and step back and then you know try again but I'm gonna leave it as is I'm gonna drag it up I'm gonna drag this one up and if you've got good line work it shouldn't have a, a problem now one of the problems we do have though is that it's selected this entirety um, but I want to get rid of this, but this is a sky area. So to do that, our subtraction option is Alt. There it is there. There's our negative. I'm going to click and drag in there. And that's not too bad. I'm going to take away this part here. And we can gradually build up our objects. Now, if you run into some problems where it's not going to take away the way you want, you can still jump back into your lasso tool so you can keep all the selected jump into your lasso tool and say you know what I'm going to hold down alt I'm going to take away this part uh, I'm going to hold down alt I'm going to take away this part um, maybe there's a part you want to add um, let's have a look 
make this part here so you can hold down shift and you just need to hold down shift to start it if you keep holding down shift it's only going to it's going to give you weird increments and there it is there cool all right let's copy and paste that in place so command j there it is there let's call this tree and there's my tree tree person background still there so let's turn those off let's bring our background back our original shot six let's see if we can get rid of this tree so I'm going to use the same technique again holding down command clicking in the thumbnail of the tree I've selected it make sure I'm in shot six here now I'm going to do this again which I'm sure it's going to mess up but let's do it again edit fill apply give it a few moments and yes it's it's messed it up so let's go back to the rules again select modify expand 10 pixels is fine edit fill and okay give it a few moments and done a reasonable job there's a few little bits here and there but overall not bad command D we are getting there we've got a tree by itself we've got a person by themselves great let's break apart a few extra shots for this uh, I'm gonna go wand should be fairly straightforward I'm gonna select this ground plane go a little bit far there that should be fine let's go command J there it is there I'm gonna reselect on it select modify expand great edit fill um, I actually might need to make sure I'm on the background layer sorry edit fill hit OK and there it is there yeah, realistically I could have just painted that back in but that's fine and we're gradually getting all of our separate layers happening a couple of other quick ones clouds command J um, I'm going to grab a leaf all this with a quick selection tool works reasonably well in most cases command J and now I'm just going to end up with a background color so you know we could just create a new layer I'm just going to grab a brush the white, white paint and we've got our background we've got a leaf got some clouds we've got the ground plane we've got a tree and we've got a person so let's just make sure we name these ground clouds and leaf now great now they're all separate layers here they are in the timeline we also need to make sure that they all line up with our original shot because remember each time you create a new layer it's going to be by default five seconds so click and drag move them all in fantastic let's change the ordering for some of these so for example the person um, is currently in front of the tree so we don't want that so let's move them behind the tree um, the ground plane is fine where it is the clouds well they're going to go behind the ground plane so I'm happy with that and the leaf well I probably want that to go in front of the person maybe behind the tree cool so there we have it and each of these we need to convert to a smart object to animate them correctly leap shot six actually doesn't really need much to it um, and there we have our basics 
Now let's look at animating this. Um, in fact, before we do that, let's look at actually colouring this in. This is a bit boring. It's you know, it's just white with some some pencil looking marks. We can colour this in in a couple of ways, and I'm going to show you probably one of the quickest and easiest ways of doing this. Is given that this is a smart object, like so, we can't just jump in with a paintbrush. I can't go. I want to paint this tree red. Um, it's not going to allow me. It's destructive. I can't use the paint bucket either, or the gradient tool. It's not going to allow me. It's going to ask me to render it, and I don't really want to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this effects button here, and this is our. Um, if we hover over over here, this is our layer style. So let's jump in there, and I'm going to go to the basic one, which is color overlay. This panel is going to pop up here. Check your blend mode. I'm going to set this to multiply. And multiply is going to allow me to still see my line work. And it's going to apply the color over white. So there it is there. And you may need to change these around depending um, how you want them to, to blend. So I typically find multiply works quite well with dark lines. There's our colour here. Um, in storyboards, most of the time we stick to grayscales. It's reminiscent of Copic markers, and we can add our colour there. Our cool thing with layer styles, and this being a smart object, is we can change these at any point. We can jump back in. We can go, okay, great. There they are. There. There's our colour overlay. We can double click on there. Oh, I don't like that colour. Let's make it a bit darker. And there it is. There. Great. Good. Good start. Let's do it with a few others. We're going to do a few different things with this. Uh, let's do the ground plane. I'm going to go to effects. And rather than going to color overlay, I'm going to go to gradient overlay. So gradient's going to place, a, obviously, a gradient. I've got it set to multiply, so I can still see the line work. And it fills in just within that object. Um, there's a few different options here. Radial, for example. I'm just going to hit reset alignment and if you can't find it always hit reset alignment and what we can do is we can actually click in here and we can choose where that is going to be aligned to and it's obviously this is a radial one and we can scale it so you can, you know, depending on how you want to set this up or we can go linear uh, I'm going to stick with linear for this you can adjust the angle I sort of have it a little bit darker in the background actually let's do a sunset so We'll do it a bit brighter in the background and play around with the scale as required. Lovely. Um, and obviously we've got options for bringing up colours and stuff like that, but let's keep it simple for now. Um, so those are our two main ones that I'm going to suggest doing. There is another option though. Now, if for example I want to colour this person in, but I don't want to just stick with just a plain block colour, I want to have a little bit of detail Maybe some variation in the pants and the shirt, that sort of thing. Well, I can't paint on him, and I can't really uh, do much more than just add a color or a gradient. What I can do is, I, as this is a smart object, I can double click on him and open him up as a smart object. So there he is there. I'm going to create a new empty layer. Uh, I'm going to hold down Command to select on my person there and this is brings up the marching ants and I'm going to jump in with my brush let's bring up some colors so window color there's my color picker here and I'm going to start coloring this in so this is on the blank layer I've got the marching ants I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply so I can see what's going on and as you can see I can start gradually painting him in now, I'm not going to spend too much time painting him in, but needless to say, this is an option that we can we can start playing around with and painting them in. And just using that um, command key to select the marching ants is just going to stop us from accidentally I'm going to deselect from going outside of the lines there. Now, as previously said, if you do want to add something different to this, if you want to add a top hat to them or something like that, um, you can obviously go to your crop tool and start expanding this out. But please note, 
that if you do not centralize this so it should lock into place so it's back into the center you will get a thing where it kind of jumps so I'm going to give you a quick example of that I'm going to hit command S which will save it jump back to our shot here and let's really ramp this up with a crop I'm going to push it all the way up here and apply save it and you can see it's just pushed him further and further down so um, that can affect your overall image so if it does come to cropping it you know just make sure that it is back in the center it should lock into the center and save and there he is back in place and I can add a top hat or whatever but for now that is just fine and it's going to reiterate back into our original shot so super simple um, let's just add a background color oh, I'm still in crop let's jump out of crop don't crop cool um, I'm just going to add a gradient to this background cool um, where's my leaf effects color overlay yeah that kind of works okay super simple let's animate this I'm going to go down and hit transform these should all be smart objects so you'll see transform instead of just position and I'm just going to the starting position and drop down I'm activating transform for everything that I'm going to animate like so um, great let's move our character to where we want them to be and maybe start off so Again, I, I kind of messed up the uh, the, uh, the crop layer so it's you know, expanded out but that's fine let's move that to there um, let's move the leaf the leaf is on the tree and it breaks off do keep in mind of our bounding box so we can see where everything is and actually let's leave that there now the background I uh, I'm going to get this guy to move across. We're going to have a little bit of camera movement as well, so the tree's going to cut across a little bit. Our ground plane needs to move as well. Um, so I'll actually need to extend that out a little bit. Now, a couple of options we could do is I could just simply transform and stretch it out, and I don't, or exp, you know, scale it up. I don't think anyone's going to notice. Um, other option is I could crop. So again, C for crop. I could stretch out my entire canvas and it, once again important thing to remember is do make sure you lock this into the center of where it should be so it should tell you there we go it should lock in um, and then you know maybe I could repaint that ground plane um, and, and you know reapply it before we do any animation to it so um, this could mean that I need, might need to rasterize it or something like that so Oop, wrong button. but uh, for now I'm just going to scale it I don't think anyone's going to notice too much um, I'm actually just going to move it left to right so that should be fine just keep in mind the, the frame cool So let's jump back to our starting position. And it looks like everything sort of jumped with the crop. So I'm just going to move everything back into its positions. I've just noticed snaps on, so I'm going to make sure that's turned off. That's where you see the little guidelines. Lovely. Um, everything should be still turned on for transformation. Let's scrub to our 
end frame here. I'm going to grab our character. Again, I'm holding down Command to activate auto select. Um, I don't usually like having auto select turned on. It messes things up quite often. But And I'm going to move my character across here and let's just scale them up a bit. So as we scrub, there he is. Walks across. Let's move him into the foreground a bit. Cool, so you know that's legs aren't moving, but that's not a big problem. The tree and the leaf. Actually, I'm gonna have the leaf falling off anyway, so let's do a slight camera movement with that where I'm gonna move the tree across, maybe up a bit. So this is gonna sort of suggest that we've got a camera movement, and obviously with the background as well we are going to have that moving as well because if the camera is moving it's not the tree that's walking it's we're going to get a parallax effect now the trick for doing this is the further things are away from us the less it's going to be apparent that they moved so we want to make sure that we move the background but not as much as the tree that way we get a nice parallax effect let's get those clouds moving so we just need to get those into position, like so. Let's move there, and they're also going to be moving, but maybe just a little bit. They're going further in the background. Cool. And finally, I'm just going to have that little leaf sort of move off, shift it a little bit here, give it a bit of a transformation. Save it out, Command S. Let's jump back to our animatic, and there it is there. It's all updated. And we can scrub through. We've got a little bit of uh, movement happening. The shot looks much nicer than when we first started off. And you know, it's all locked away in that smart object. Oh. Let's find it again. Make sure we're on the right layer. So shot six, five. There it is there. So it's all broken apart into the elements. Simple, simple, simple. A um, couple other quick things I want to show you is um, along with transformation we do have the option for animating opacity but we also have the option for animating the style as well. So I'm going to show you what that means. So I'm going to activate the option for animating the style and let's just scrub to the end of the timeline here. What that basically means is our effects here, let's double click on those, are animatable. So a color overlay that we've got on here, um, you know, I can change the color of that. Let's say that the tree suddenly decides it's going to turn orange. And that is going to basically gradually animate. So, you know, you could add another keyframe in there if needed. Um, where you go, okay, well, I'm just going to go blue, for example green um, and there it's added a keyframe for that style so it's green to orange which is a bit wacky would 